basically uh, with a b c d e uh, you know uh, once the a b c d is initiated simultaneously uh, the fluid resuscitation can be started okay we should also have a focus on massive blood transfusion a protocol particularly if you have a patient with a severe bleeding especially from the tracheobronchial tree or thoracic or abdominal bleeding so the massive transfusion protocol uh, can be activated and uh, uh, anti i mean the coagulation factor you know supplementation or tranexamic acid and consideration for coagulopathy is also very very important a patient with a head injury unless put otherwise should always we should suspect them having cervical spine injury so we should rule out cervical spine injury and uh trauma team should take care so when we talk about the systematic approach in terms of a b c d e so a is airway with cervical spine stabilization so uh, cervical spine stabilization has the highest priority uh and then b is breathing with ventilation when we are trying to assess whether the patient is breathing appropriately or patient has respiratory distress or patient has shallow breathing so the breathing uh, should be uh, controlled with ventilation or oxygen support uh, so uh, so here we are trying to assess the patient and the resuscitation is going hand in hand like in airway uh, if the patient has airway compromised uh, okay so there we have to inspect the oral cavity and uh, securing uh, uh, the oxygen uh, uh, saturation to uh, uh, uh about 92% is the resuscitation okay so similarly here breathing if the patient is not breathing properly putting him on ventilator or supporting with the oxygen devices like non invasive ventilation or high flow nasal oxygen or uh, non deep breathing mask with high concentration oxygen support uh, is a resuscitation so c is circulation circulation means i mean we have to assess a patient's pulse you know the volume and the rate and and also if there is a bleeding we have to control the bleeding the circulation is also associated with hemorrhage control so uh, uh, and the next is disability limitation okay once we have secured a b c uh, the next uh, next uh, uh, assessment is neurological assessment where we assess the pupillary size shape and reaction and we also assess the patient with the glasgow coma score okay gcs score where we evaluate the patient with eye opening motor response and verbal response and depending upon the disability uh, severity of the disability the interventions can be advocated and then after the disability assessment is done and neurological assessment is done we should expose the patient thoroughly look for the bleeding areas any any missing injuries any open wounds or any bleeding area which is likely to be uh, uh, life threatening it needs to be addressed and once we have ex exposed the patient we have done thorough examination uh, from head to toe the patient needs to be you know covered again because uh, the patient is in er the strong ac may again lead to hypothermia and then hypothermia uh, with the coagulopathy Uh, and acidosis will become a vicious cycle and the bleeding will keep on happening so it is very important that uh, once we have exposed the patient we need to uh, start warming or cover the patient at least if the warmer is not available and then uh, we have need to have assessment of the perfusion of the organs so the organ perfusion can be assessed with the help of uh, urinary output that is the best tool so the full is catheterization can be done so let us start with uh, airway assessment first and airway breathing circulation will go systematically so once we have uh, seen the patient uh, and uh, the airway assessment is very very important so as we know that hypoxia is the major threat and major killer uh, so uh, hypoxia should be avoided as far as possible so once we have seen the patient we need to assess the potency of the airway check whether the patient is responsive if the patient is responding you know check whether the airway is patent if the airway is patent it means there is no obstruction in the airway and probably uh, uh, he is able to maintain the airway and the saturation can be maintained but if there is any foreign body in the oral cavity okay it has to be inspected and it has to be removed with the magil forceps any foreign body maybe a tooth or maybe a blood clot or maybe uh, uh, 
uh, any foreign body which, uh, which which might have come in the oral cavity so it has to be removed meticulously and uh, sometimes even after opening the airway though the airway is looking patent but still the saturation is borderline because there may be a tongue fall and the tongue fall can cause airway obstruction so we need to have uh, uh, you know uh, adequate um, uh, measures to open the airway properly so a simple jaw thrust can help you uh, the airway obstruction related to the tongue uh, tongue fall which can be prevented and then uh, even after you know giving jaw thrust or chin lift if the patient's airway is not remaining patent or uh, again uh, the saturation is dropping it is very important that we put an oropharyngeal airway or nasal airway nasal airway should be avoided if the patient has nasal bleeding or csf rhinorrhea or basal skull fracture okay if there is any bleeding through the nose or bleeding through the mastoid gives you enough clue that the patient is likely to have basal skull fracture and the nasal airway should be avoided as far as possible if but if the head injury is not there and the patient's uh, airway is obstructed because of uh, hypoxemia probably nasal airways can be inserted so basically oral oropharyngeal airways are preferred when the patient is uh, unconscious okay so because if the patient is conscious he may not tolerate oral airways and he may repeatedly remove the airway or it can keep triggering uh, the pharynx and can cause vomiting and aspiration so the size of the airway and uh, consciousness of the patient uh, is a good tool which which airway should be selected for a particular patient so nasopharyngeal airway is selected for semi conscious or little conscious patients where they may keep the airway it is just the nasopharyngeal obstruction that can be relieved with the nasopharyngeal airway and the intubations can be avoided but if the patient is very much obtended is unconscious gcs is less than 8 it is preferable to put uh, the endotracheal tube and put the patient on uh, mechanical ventilator or either at least to secure the airway because any patient with the gcs less than 8 they are, they are at high risk of aspiration pneumonia and then they will have a pneumonia and prolonged stay prolonged ventilator support and then antibiotics all that need to be given to this patient so uh, aspiration is one of the preventable uh, complication which can be you know uh, addressed after assessing the gc score and if, if we find that you know oxygen saturation is not maintained with any of these devices be it oropharyngeal nasopharyngeal airway or uh, we have a situation where we we cannot intubate or cannot ventilate the patient like a uh, patient has significant uh, oropharyngeal injury where passing a tube through the oral cavity is very very difficult so then surgical airway or surgical cricotheratomy can be advocated so surgical cricotheratomy is like you know putting a tube through the cricotheratic membrane giving an incision to the cricotheratic membrane and passing a tube either tracheostomy tube or endotracheal tube can be inserted but once the cricotheratomy is inserted make sure that the cricotheratomy is converted into a tracheostomy or, or a tracheal tube should be inserted within 24 hours okay uh, if the surgical airway like a tracheostomy is done it may be very difficult uh, very difficult uh, only the trained uh, surgeon can do uh, surgical tracheostomy but it also has uh, complications the false airway uh, and then pneumothoraces and mediastinal complication tracheobronchial tree injury can also happen so it is very safe to do cricotheratomy in an emergency where we have a cannot intubate cannot uh, ventilate even kind of a situation and so then cricotheratomy is the way uh, to uh, acquire, uh, secure the airway so meanwhile whenever we are doing these uh, airway uh, using these airway adjuncts it is very important that the cervical spine is stabilized so once the patient comes to us it is very important that we need to assess the cervical spine ask the patient where he whether he has any tenderness in the neck or is he, he has restricted neck movements if if he has restricted neck movements uh, we need to uh, apply a cervical spine collar but while uh, we want to go ahead with the intubation the cervical collar should be removed and manual cervical stabilize inline stabilization should be done for these patients.